Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. Uh, I am thrilled today to be sitting in person with Kevin Campbell here. He's a singer songwriter. Um, we are in Raleigh and I'm excited. He's got his new album out album out and I'm so excited to dig into this. He walked in with his guitar. So there are possibilities of things that could happen while we're here. But uh, Kevin, thank you so much for joining me and being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So happy to be here. Yeah. I want to start with your beginning story of music. Where did music become, you know, stuck with you? How did, how was your childhood with music, the connection there? In sixth grade, I was in a guitar class okay. and I was like really good. I was first chair. Yeah. And then I got like in this argument with this other girl in class <laughs> and I ended up getting in school suspension. Okay. And the teacher ended up putting me in the last chair and wouldn't let me challenge the rest of the year. Okay. So when they gave out like these forms for the electives the next year, I just okay. threw mine away. I was like, forget this. And I didn't touch a guitar again until I was like 26 years old. Wow. And I was walking through like Montgomery Ward. Remember those stores? Yes. And it was going out of business and there was a yeah. guitar that was on the floor. I had a crack in it and okay. they were selling it for 40 bucks. And I was like, I think I'm gonna learn how to play guitar. Okay. And that led to all of this. Okay. Um, and then it carried through. You were talking to me beforehand. You went to, you know, Northern, Northern Virginia. You went up to school um, in New York. Like, tell me about that. Tell me about what you learned there, what happened and how it got you to move out West. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in Northern Virginia and I, I went to college down Georgia Southern okay. and and I had a weird path. Like I yeah. actually was like a professional mascot in Charlotte for the Charlotte Knights baseball I team. I love that. I was running around as Homer the Dragon and I was doing all these skits in between the innings yeah. and I just really liked it. And I was like, I need to, I, I want to go to film school. So okay. I went up to New York and went to film school okay. and that led me to going out to Los Angeles. Okay. And I started taking acting classes and I was okay. acting in commercials and different TV shows and yeah. things like that. And, and it just all kind of led into music, the yeah. storytelling aspect yeah. of it all. I think that's the beautiful part about film songwriting too. Like I think every, like people have connections with songs too. And that's like somehow or the other, it hits you yeah. in your life. And that's the important part of music in my eyes. I'm like, you can listen to a song a million times and it still has. Definitely. I mean, with like film, you'd spend like a year working on something and then somebody goes, you should have ended it like this. And yeah. you're just like, like, I didn't think about this for two years, yes. but like with the song, you can like write it on a Tuesday, play it on a Thursday and everybody claps. Yeah. And then you're just yeah. like, oh, this is, this is the most yes. amazing feeling. And, yeah. and I could write about the saddest things in my life. And it would always just make me happy that that song came out of yeah. it, you know, and yeah. that I couldn't get that out of the film. Yes. Yeah. It's, I think it's, you know, you sit in a movie, you're like expecting to see, to feel different emotions, but with music, you're kind of walking through whatever stage of life you're in. It, it like, it yeah. feels different. It hits different. And it's relevant to the time that you are in your life. Definitely. It's like you, I don't set out with any agenda when I write a song, I just kind of oh. chase the chord and then chase yeah. the lyric. And then when it's over, I'm like, oh, that's what's been running through my head. Yeah. Oh, that's what I would think about yes. the situation. Yeah. And I'm always surprised by it. From the songwriter part of it, how do you like, this is me just asking the, the geeky, not knowing question of like, how do you put a song together? Like, how does it in your head? How does a song come together? I'm usually just noodling on a guitar. And then I'll play like a chord okay. and another chord okay. and something about that, that yeah. day, the way those chords go together, yes. it just makes me like a, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. and then that hmm turns into, yeah. I don't know. Okay. And then I don't okay. know, turns into something and I just yeah. keep chasing it. And sometimes I won't even know what the song's about until I get to the very end. Yeah. Or like, sometimes I'll know when the chorus comes around, but yes. once I know, then I can really finish the song. Okay. Sometimes I'm just have like cool words and it yeah. doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to mean something for me to be able to sing it in front of people. Totally. Has there been points where you're like, you get into, I, I call it the zone or the flow of things and you're in it for like a certain amount of hours. Like what's the longest you've kind of been in that state of songwriting singing? Yeah, that zone, you can feel it. It's like, it's like yes. a hole opens up in the universe yes. and you don't know how long you have, yes. but when you're in it, you can like yeah. really write a lot. Yeah. And sometimes you might like, I might write a cluster of songs. Okay. And then sometimes that, it just will close and won't open yeah. up for another year or so. Yeah. So you kind of have to use some little discipline with it. Yeah. Like I, I'll find myself if I like say, okay, I'm going to write for an hour today. After like 15 minutes of struggling, I might have like a line. And yeah. then like 30 minutes later, I might have like a chorus. Yeah. And then like the next day, if I do another hour, usually I'll finish the song. Yep. But I don't always want to make myself do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes I just want that inspiration to strike, but yes. you'll wait a long time for that. Yes. Yeah. I, I always say like, I'll at a certain point, I it's for me when I'm editing. So when I'm editing, I'm sitting there and it could be three hours, it could be longer, but I'll suddenly look up and I'm like, 
I got to eat. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I got it. The dogs are staring at me. Yeah. I've got to, I've got to get up and yeah. possibly get out, out of this couch. Yeah. I used to edit and I would not drink the whole day. And I'd like yeah. be cramping in my chair. Like what's going yeah. on? I'm like, yeah. I'm thirsty. I'm like, I probably should go to bed. <laughs> I probably should go do something else. Um, but it is funny. Like I always know when the, when the dogs start coming up and looking at me like mom, <laughs> it's time to go to bed or it's time Feed to me. let me outside. Me, I'm please. like, maybe time to get up from the spot. Um, but it, to your point, like that opening in space, like that's exactly what it is. I'm like, you kind of feel like you're flying kind of situation. It's different for everybody. But the funny part is, is that recently I've been talking to a lot of people that are in this creative editing, uh, songwriting, whatever it is. And I'm like, we all have these flow states in different mm -hmm in different creative spaces, but it's so cool. Cause we can all say, yes, we know what flow is and what it yeah. feels like, and we all have it. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear every single person's flow state and what they kind of, the zone they get into. It's weird. Cause you can actually see it. Like you, yeah. you feel like it's like open. Yeah. You're like, okay, there's yeah. a portal right now. You're just kind of like, it's, it's, it's very, it's like weird to describe and like your description of like the portal is the best way, but you like your eyes get just, but like yeah. laser focused It all makes on sense it. and you can see the steps yes. and you just yeah. follow it and it just happens. Your You're like, oh wow. Your hand is writing things faster than it usually yeah. does. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I hear anybody say like, oh, the song just poured out of me in 30 minutes. Like yeah. there was that, that portal Flow. opened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to hop right into the album that you, you know, released just a week ago, The Stages. Mm -hmm. You said, um, this is the album I didn't want to write, but eventually I felt that I needed to in order to move on Yeah. or move forward set the stage for the stages yeah um i was in a relationship for 22 years okay. with a woman named melissa kobe okay uh we met back in like 99 when i was like in an acting class okay. and we were in class together for for a long time before we one day she came in and she, her hair was straightened and she was wearing this new dress yeah. and like we started flirting the whole class okay. and then after class like we like rode around with each other and like talked like from midnight to like four o'clock in the morning and we were like together ever since okay and um, in June of 2021, mm -hmm. she was like hiking the Pacific Coast Trail okay. and the, the temperature spiked that day. It was supposed to be like 90 degrees. It ended up being like 110 degrees, like at like 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And she ended up dying from a like heat stroke, mm -hmm. you know, and and, you know, she was always a big supporter of my music and everything. And I wrote so many songs about her and our relationship yeah. and stuff. And I just couldn't find myself wanting to like write songs about, yes. about her dying or about about missing her or any of this stuff. But. I couldn't write anything else. Every time I tried to write, it was something like this was coming out and I avoided it for a long time. And then I just started getting perspective around it. Like yeah. a lot of people reached out to me that were wid widowed and lost their kids. Yeah. And I had, um, I thought like, I thought, could I do that in return for other people? Yeah. And I thought like maybe these songs could help other people if yeah. they heard it and if they were in that time of need. Yeah. So I ended up eventually starting to write the album. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's more about me in dealing with the grief yeah. and the stages yeah. of all the seven stages of grief than it is about us, yeah. you know, yeah. but it, it, it is a, um, it is like a love song to our yeah. relationship too. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's so beautiful how, how it's done. And I think the title you just describing the stages of grief too, like the title is perfect for the album too. Mm -hmm. It fits so well with what, um, you're speaking to is there a song on there that was just the absolute hardest for you to to write and sing and put together i think it was cocoon okay it was this the last song on the album is the last song that i wrote okay it was, it was I, I wrote it pretty much on christmas night oh wow both i was sick with covid my dad was i got my dad <laughs> sick with covid we we're both sick we didn't go anywhere we, yeah. we scrapped all of our plans and i was just sitting up late at night and i was playing really quiet so i wouldn't wake my dad and and it was just a song about like the, the opening line is I'm going to need more time to mourn old me yeah. because like when you lose someone like that, you like, you also lose a part of you that was happy with them yeah. and, the, and, the, and the part, you know, you change yeah. with grief changes you. So the song is about mourning old me and her. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's called cocoon because like I was writing about the stages of grief, but when I thought about it at the end, like I also wrote about the stages of my metamorphosis because okay. through the songs, I can hear myself changing and having perspective and there's one song called baby we made it where i'm like um celebrating our relationship yeah. you know because everybody says death to us part so when it actually happens like how come we can't celebrate it like yeah. that was the only thing that broke us up you know so that song was like uh, as it was me committing myself to moving forward with my life yeah. 
and 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 wishing my old self yeah. in her well yeah you know when once you completed this with like were there certain emotions of relief or it, just that you had gotten it out or anything like that or was you what was what was the emotions after it's weird after every song that i wrote like i had complete breakdown okay you know, just straight tears after totally. I wrote the song and then it's like but cocoon is the only song that still makes me sad when i hear it the okay. other ones i'm like oh that sounds great oh that's yeah. a great harmonica yeah. solo i love this yeah. you know like, i look at it differently and it's, but i know every at every stage with every song i have like yes. really had a moment and it had to like move forward yeah yeah it's it's interesting like we were talking about beforehand the emotions that you feel in the time of life um and i want to just hop into the genre that you i mean this is a blues jazz how did you kind of figure out the sound and what did what you wanted this to be I just wrote like I always wrote. Okay. And it just okay. came out how it came out. Yeah. But then I hired this producer named John Shane. Okay. And there was an um, engineer named FJ Ventre. Okay. And I hadn't worked with them before. They were based out of Durham and Chapel Hill. And I met him and, and John Shane just like shepherded the whole project, yeah. brought in a bunch of different musicians. Okay. He was like, oh, I can hear a harmonic harmonica here. Mm -hmm. Like I never heard of a harmonica there, <laughs> but I'm so happy the harmonica's there. You know what yeah. I mean? He's like, oh, yeah. I can hear this you know, Oregon doing this here and yes. doing that there. And he really shaped it. And, you know, that's beautiful. And, you know, when I was like, oh, let him play a real good solo here. Like he was like, no, we got to keep this. Yeah. We got to keep this one soft and gentle because, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, he cared about it more than that. Yeah. I was like, let's just go all crazy <laughs> on this. You know, he really saved it. OK, OK. When when you are typically writing music outside of, you know, the stages mm -hmm. leading up to this album, is there a certain genre that you like associate more with? Is there one that you speak, like speaks to you more? If you like listen to uh, other albums, like I really yeah. like each song will kind of be different than the okay. other. So some might sound jazzier, some might sound bluesier, yeah. some might sound folky, you okay. know, some might sound okay. cold country. I, I don't, the only thing that kind of, I, I feel like is the same as like my lyrics, yes. like the way I write my stuff and yeah. you know, like I can, that ties it all together. Yeah. I, I just sit down with an acoustic guitar and yeah. I just kind of like try to find something that yeah. grooves me and moves yeah. me and grooves me. Yeah. And it just ends up how it ends up. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't even describe. <laughs> I couldn't even describe like what my, that's the hardest thing. Cause they ask you when you like post your stuff on like Spotify totally. and different things like, what's your, your genre? genre? And, like, yes. If I said I'm blues, people that do blues, like that's not blues. Yes. And I'm not country and I'm not folk. It's kind of like, you know, yes. It's kind of like the, it's, kind of a old example like the the taylor swift she was country for a long time and then she started making yeah. new music and people are like she's not country i'm like she yeah. is writing a country album but then they you know she transitioned fully to pop and then people still are like she's not pop though so it's yeah. it's weird that, but that classification sometimes people in those certain genres they're like you're not this or you're not that yeah. it just it throws people off i definitely write like in a country way where it's like okay. descriptive and it's more yeah. of a story kind of thing but I don't sing in the twang, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and it's just like, that yeah. kind of separates you from like the country. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you are going back to your writing, is there a certain environment that you like to be in when you write? We were talking about flow state, but is there a certain, like you're in your bedroom or you're in a studio or is there a certain place you like to? I'm a couch superstar. Okay. <laughs> Sitting on my couch. TV's usually on. I and love it's that. usually loud. Yeah. You know, TV's just yeah. loud and I'm just, kind of just doing my yeah. thing and I can just like lock in okay. and then I'll write on whatever's in front of me. Like it okay. could be the back of an envelope, okay. it could be a no on my phone yeah. notes, it could just be a notepad Yeah, and it's, it's scraps all over yeah. the place and oh, I just yeah. chase it, you know? And if I really hear something and you know, I'm like, oh, this is good. And then yeah, I record yeah. it Okay. because I, I won't remember like an hour later, the oh, melody no. will change in my head. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. I'm, I'm the, I'm the same way in the fact that I'm like, if I don't write this down right now, gone yeah it is out of my head i will not remember it in 30 minutes i will not remember yeah. it in 10. sometimes if it really comes I, i'll just trust it i'll just kind of do it okay. over and over again and I, it kind of feels like it's stuck yeah. but if i really love it i'm, I'm scared to lose it I'll, yeah. I'll record it yep now you have your beautiful guitar here is guitar the only instrument you play what is your yeah. repertoire of instruments took, uh, my, my parents got me a piano like for okay. first grade christmas and I'm oh like, yeah i was like thanks yeah i wanted the atari <laughs> but a piano and I played that until probably eighth grade and then sports took over. Yeah. You yeah. know, so 
basically guitar is it yeah i we you know i think a lot of kids when they're growing up did piano like parents put them in piano lessons and i'm like great i did this for a little while but i'm like yeah not my jam not no. my jam at all no. and to the point i was like i'm gonna go do sports i'm gonna go get outside and yeah that was what i did too now i wish i i I played harder and totally. like I, I know how to play. Totally. But I wish I learned guitar. Like that was the instrument that I wish I learned because it just one yeah. seems cooler, but also at the same time, I hated sitting so tall at the piano and like sitting there. I'm like, I want to get up and play yeah. or do something. But if you're at a party and there's a piano there, everybody, nobody minds oh. if someone gets up and plays a piano. Oh yeah. Someone pulls out a guitar at a party. Everybody's like, oh, come on, dude, stop, <laughs> stop. put your guitar away. <laughs> that is very true. People like gather around the piano. Yeah, people love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were just talking about it too before we started. You just had your release party out in LA. First, just how did it go? What was the reception of it? How how did things go out there? It went great. I like I moved to Raleigh like in March of uh, 2022. Okay. Or May of 2022. Okay. And I mean, I know some people here, but they didn't know yeah. Melissa. They didn't know me us totally. you know so i went back to do it with like a lot of our friends and okay. people and some of her family flew in town yeah and it was it was just great it was well received nice. you know and it was like i i told him before we started i was like this isn't a memorial you know yeah, like yeah. we've had it like yeah. this is like you we've know, done it you know yeah. it's more of a celebration of stuff yeah and nice i was happy with it like good. i'm glad i made the choice to go out there and do it good good when you are putting together an album and you were just talking about the two guys you worked with um like, what do you look for in in people in the audio and making an album come together? Like, are there certain people? Or are they kind of just handpicked for you? Like, what does that look like for you? This album is my sixth album. Okay. And the first five, I worked with the same guy, Tommy Hazarian, and he was great. And like, he lives in Portland. And yeah. It just seemed harder with the time zone. Yeah. And I didn't want to like do this album for a long, long time. Yeah. I wanted to kind of get it done, and get Rip it, over. it right off. And I planned to go to LA and just use him again and just try to record everything in a yeah. week. And then a friend of mine had used John Shane to, to produce a song of hers. Yeah. And I heard her single and I was just like, that guitar is ripping. And I'm like, that sounds great. Like, yeah. I was like, who did mm -hmm. it? And so I started researching it. Yeah. You've gotten all of this um, out into the world. Is there a, okay, down the line, a seventh al album. I'm going to do a seventh one. Is it like anywhere in your mind right now? I kind of as soon as like I release an album, <laughs> I'm like, it's out of my hands. Like the promoting yeah. part is the worst part yeah, about yeah. it. Like it's got you're basically hounding your friends yes. and like strangers. It's like, please listen. Yeah. So <laughs> instantly I just I'm already just trying to write again. OK, OK. You know, because like when you're like doing the the album, you're like listening to your, your you know, the, the tracks over and over again. You're yeah. listening to the mixes over and over again You're listening to the master. And you're just like you're just stuck in that world. Now I'm just kind of want to like try something else, see yeah. what else comes out, yeah. you know, see what else I'm thinking about, yeah. like what else I care about. Yeah. You know? Well, in the theme of, you know, stages of your life, now you're kind of what, what is next? What is, what is in your life right now? And what, uh, what can possibly, what can you write about that? I have no idea. I'm like, <laughs> really want to find out. Like, yeah, the possibilities I, are there. You know, cause I was in like LA, I was also trying to write screenplays and trying to see if I could get those yeah. sold and do all that kind of stuff. So I always like writing. Yeah. And have, I don't have any other outlets out yeah. here in Raleigh yeah. that I had out there. So I'm, t I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yeah. I know I'm going to make another album eventually okay. one day. After, after about like a year, I'm okay. going to be like, I, I want to be in the studio. Because yeah, that's, yeah. the, that's the best part of my life is just sitting in the studio, yes. watching some musician come in and totally. put a part. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I could go there. Totally. And, you know, the, the rest of it, yeah. it's just like, eh. I'm always impressed by sitting there and watching the producers just click all the buttons, move mm -hmm. things. Cause th like we were talking about, like they hear things that we don't, Yeah. but watching them do all this. And I'm just like, this looks like yeah. outer space to yeah. me. I'm like, this makes, some of this makes sense. And some of this just is out of this world craziness to me. Yeah. Like I can't hear, I can hear what I can do <laughs> and I can hear what I think it should sound right. like, but I can't hear what I think the musician should do. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't hear the parts yeah. and the, the producer I had was hearing the parts and yes. it's like, do this here, play yeah. that key over this, and then we'll blend it in there, and then the yeah. backup will be here. And I'm like, and just watching it come together, I was yeah. like really proud of it. Yeah. Well, and then they've got all the screens that you can literally see, like your sound waves and just yeah. how they match up. And I'm like, this is nuts to me. Yeah. But it's like, it, like I said, it's like the coolest shit to watch because totally. you're sitting there and you're like, this is magic right here. Like this is something truly coming together the one thing that was different about using new people i was like really comfortable with my the old guy i worked with totally. that like i could like just be a control freak yeah, and yeah. like 
this, let me do it one more time. Let me yeah. do it one more time. Yeah. And then with these new guys, like I was like, maybe I should re-sing that part. And he's like, yeah. do you have voice dysmorphia? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Kevin, stand back, step back for a second. All right. Noted, <laughs> noted. Is there, on that, has there been several times where you're like, I just don't like how this is coming out. And you kind of do have to take that step oh, back. Oh, I will. Like, I'll, I'll fight for stuff. Like, okay. you know, I'll fight for things that are, that really matter. Yeah. But I'll also, I'm open to, like, seeing what would happen. Yeah, yeah. And usually I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I can live with that. Yeah, yeah. I can live with that. That's the hardest part is, like, finishing your album with things that you can live with. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are yeah. or how good you think you are. You're always gonna hate stuff about your album after it's totally, over because totally. like you yeah, end up you end up listening to yeah. it a million times and you then you get good. Yes. Like when you like when you go into like the studio and you record like your voice, you might sing the part like 10 times and yes. you use the best parts. Yeah. So now you're listening to the best part all the time. So you start singing it like the best part, and then yeah. you get even better than that. Yeah. So then you look back at what you did and you're like, ah, oh, I wish I could. Uh. Yeah. But people don't hear that. People yeah. don't hear that fight. Yeah. that you have oh, in your yeah. head so it, it's the it's the nitpicky perfectionism that we all have in us like i will sit there and edit a video i think it's like screenplays too and yeah. film you sit there and you're editing things for mm -hmm. hours and you're like my god i'm like i can't watch this anymore yeah. like it, mm -hmm. it's it's as good as it's gonna get and so, uh, you get to a point where you're just like hands up in the air i yeah. can't do anymore um but I think we all have that perfect the us that live in the yeah. creator space all have that perfectionism in us because we're like you go back into your point, you watch it or you listen yeah. to it and you're like, oh, crap. But what happens after like about a few months after it's done, you start forgetting the battles. Oh, you start yeah. forgetting what yeah. you like compromised on and whatever. And yes. it just becomes what it is. Yeah. And then a year later, you listen, you're like, oh, that was that was pretty good. You know, you don't <laughs> even remember any of the stuff. Yeah. So you, you eventually yeah. get there. You just have to like yeah, yeah. time. Yeah. If you were not doing what you were doing today, what would you be doing? I don't know. I was, I, I just decided to like to chase the creative thing. I decided to like, just yeah. like you struggle yeah. <laughs> bills your whole yeah. life and do all this stuff. You know, like I just, I just, I watched my friends with their mortgages and their kids first day of school picks. And totally. I never felt jealous. Wow. I never felt jealous. I'm happy for them, but it was just never like what I wanted. Like, yeah. you know, I don't have a retirement plan. I don't have yeah. a 401k. I'm just like chasing the creative thing. Yeah. And then when it, you know, it falls apart, it falls apart. It's, it's funny because people ask, I, I get asked the same question. I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea because what I'm doing is what I love. Yeah. But if I had to go, like people say outlandish things, I'm like, but would you really be able to go do that? <laughs> yeah. Like people are yeah. like, I'll oh, be a professional soccer player. I'm like, have you ever played soccer before? And yeah. they're like, no. And I'm like, you <laughs> might not want to pursue that then. It's trippy being here. Cause like in LA, like everybody was chasing some kind of creative dream. Totally. I could call somebody up at one o'clock. I'm like, what are you doing? Nothing. Want to go hang? Yeah, yeah. I was hang. Cause like, yeah. you know, everybody was just, I had like these jobs to support themselves, yes. but it was like out of the way of their day. So they could yeah. go on auditions and do things. And then I come here and I'm like at a party and people are like, Hey, Kevin, what industry are you in? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. I don't, <laughs> I can't, I don't I can't have this conversation. I don't, <laughs> I'm not equipped for this conversation. Just... I don't know how to have this conversation <laughs> no. anymore. No. Um, no, it is funny. It's, I think part of that, you know, the culture out West is kind of making its way here, like from New York down, like yeah. so many people are moving from New York down here, but that culture's moving down south because I've got three jobs. Like I am, but I'm doing what I love. And it's, yeah. it's the, you're hustling. And that is, that's the thing, but it's doing it so you can do what you love. And that's three the jobs too, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's, <laughs> that's the thing. I'm like, and it was like, why don't you just work your full time job? I'm like, I could, but I'd be sitting there. And at the end of the day, I would be so unhappy. Yeah. I mean, I have all the respect for people that can like work their full-time job and then do their side hustle after yes. it. I just need a little yeah. bit more time yeah. to be able yeah. to pull it off. Yes. It's a beautiful guitar too. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to play a song. It's called, um, it's on the new album. It's called Get to See You Again. Okay. Um, for like first like year and a half, I would go to bed and I'd be like, come see me in my dreams, baby. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, and, and I've only really had like a few dreams that I remember with her in it. But the first one I had, it seemed super real. And she walked in this party that everybody was at, and we're all yeah. like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be dead. And we're yeah, all like, yeah. we couldn't believe you. Like, we couldn't believe it. We're touching yeah. her and stuff. And after like a while, like, you know, eventually we were convinced. And yeah. I was sitting there talking to her on the couch, and I was like, I can't believe like you're here. Yeah. And, da, da, da. and I woke up. 
Yeah. And then it was just like she died all over again, yeah. you know. So yeah. this song is kind of like that feeling. I'll get to see you again. My heart aches and it quakes and it takes a whole day to break out of this funk inside my head. Can't wait to go to bed. Cause sometimes when I'm dreaming, I see you again. And it don't make no sense. It's like losing a limb. With you, I was whole. Now I'm in pieces again. Can't wait to lay my head. Cause sometimes when I'm dreaming, I see you again. I get to see you again. Hold you real tight like you never left. Moment between us again. Before I wake up and I lose you all over again. Can I shake these thoughts that it's all been for not? Though I do it all again to relive all I forgot. Can't wait to go to bed. Cause sometimes when I'm dreaming, I see you again. I get to see you again. Hold you real tight like you never left. The moment between us again. Before I wake up and I lose you all over again. It's worth it to see you again. It's worth it to see you again. And I can't wait to lay my head. Cause sometimes when I'm dreaming, I see you again. I can see you again. Hold you real tight like you never left. Moment between us again. Before I wake up and I lose you all over again. My heart aches and it quakes and it takes a whole day to break out of this funk inside my head. Can't wait to go to bed. Cause sometimes when I'm dreaming, I see you again. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. I am incredibly lucky that I'm getting to like sit here and just watch you sing that song. Um, so thank you very much thank for you. pulling the guitar out and playing that. Um, and you can hear, like, you can just feel that and feel all the emotion and everything that you went through with all of that. And it's, I think, like we've been talking about, like, when you lose somebody, like, and you go to bed at night and you f see them in your dreams, like, yeah. I've had that as well. And it's just something that you're like, to your point, you do wake up and you're like, they've died all over again yeah. and it's just sometimes you wish for those dreams and sometimes you hate them at the same time yeah and it's such it's such a it's such a wishy-washy like seesaw kind of thing that happens yeah. i was really just trying to find like an angle to this grief yeah. that i was experiencing that felt original too yeah. besides i'm just sad and i miss you yeah yeah and of course i have those songs too on this album but like i wanted to have like another thing because i only said death one time on the album you know okay. so okay Somebody in a breakup could listen to the song, maybe feel the same way, you yeah. know, or some, you know, yeah. somebody missing home, yeah. you know. Yep. Kevin, my last question for you yeah. is just what inspires you? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell I've never been asked that before. Um, I don't, I'm just, I'm really inspired by words. Okay. I'm like, I'm a big word guy. Yeah. I like, 
putting it together and, and finding the way they all connect with, yeah. with each other, you know, and especially I'm always just fighting to express myself and, yeah. and, and, and explain myself my, the, by my place in this world yeah. through the words. Yeah. So I'm always inspired when I see someone put words in a way that like, it was always there for me. I was yeah. like, ah, I, yes. I, I should have got there. Yes. I didn't get there. Yeah. So I'm always looking at uh, people's words and different things like that. And yeah. I'm inspired by it. I, and that's music. Like, I think what you just described is, is the definition of music yeah. too, because I think that is exactly where all the, the guitar and the drums and everything coming together, but the words is what we feel and what we relate to the most yeah. and gives us goosebumps. And that's, that's yeah. it right there. Yeah. And it's a yeah. beautiful part. If someone like connects to it and that's like, yes. ah, great. Yeah. You, yeah. you got me. You yes. understand me. Yeah. 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 Kevin, I can't thank you enough for joining with me today and singing that beautiful song. And um, you guys, if you have not listened to Kevin's new album, The Stages, please, please, please go listen to it. It's going to be linked down below. But Kevin, just thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you having me, Daniel. It's yeah, great to see you. Yeah. As always, I will see you guys back here next time. Bye, y'all.